20 totally at the bottom hole on the trim very little porpoising I need another 50 pounds up there <laughs> so I just got back from the dock went down checked the boat everything looks cool down there and everything's a disgusting <laughs> mess up here what are you doing what are you doing I gotta clean this mess up. I can't take it anymore. Oh man. But I was thinking I should have used these damn metal plates. These things weigh a ton. I forgot I had them. I, these go on the bottom of a gazebo that I got. I still have the frame and everything. And there was a lot of them. But I only took four for the four corners. But and they, and they were bolted to these things, and there was a ton of them. But I like I said at the time, I got this gazebo for free. They said you take it down, you can have it. And I just took four, and I'm like, man, these would have been perfect to throw in the front of that boat. Anyway get this place straightened out cleaned up and then these things I'll show you what I'm gonna do with them after I clean this freaking mess up well that's much better man four hours I should have did the roof first <laughs> both of them all right so here's what I wanted to show you this is boat seats, aluminum boat seat uh, brackets. The back would be screwed on here so you could fold it down type of thingy. Anyway, they're aluminum. They're strong as hell. My plan, I'm thinking, is to make trim tabs out of them. Old school style. In the old days, they didn't use the little actuators, no electricity, no springs. They just used bolts and, and nuts and bolts and just set it where it was best to tighten that baby down. They were called stepping trims. And you could also use them as a step to get into the boat. Pretty heavy duty aluminum, thick, you know, 1950s stuff. And uh, these won't be used as a step, I hope not. But that's in the old days, so I'm saying they just had bolts that would hold them together. So I'm like, all right, so I'll drill these out, put nuts and bolts in, maybe go a little bit bigger than what that hole will be, a little heavier, dutier. And then this part will be like this on the transom, right? Mounted on the transom. This part will be in the water. Then you have this much, you know, you can, move, you can even take them out when you don't need them. Boom. Or you adjust them to, you know, what's best for the boat, whatever heavy motor you're carrying. Then, you know, take chunks of aluminum, use them for the bottom. You can go short and wide. You can go not as wide and long. You know, just for ex an example here, this is just a scrap piece of aluminum. Put the aluminum on like that. This will be on the boat. Cut this. And then it's adjustable. Tighten the bolts down. Then, if it doesn't seem to quite hold, if the bolts aren't holding, there's too much pressure, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but if anything goes wrong in that situation, just get a metal rod. Once they're set to where you want them, or you can use it, make it an adjustable, get a stainless steel adjustable rod and go 45 angle with the rod and adjust it. You know, you want it down, you adjust it down. You want it up, you adjust it up. That'll stop this thing from moving if it does move on the boat. Now personally, I like, I like, you know, it would be like this, short and wide. Okay. And then these would fit 
you know how they would fit. They'd be snug. This would be the boat. So you get a couple of these. That looks like real good right there for that boat, I would think. Probably might even be overkill. And then you cut these off, you know, wherever you end up. But that's my idea. I got enough here to make two of them. Dirt cheap. Get me some good nuts and bolts. Lock washers. Rivet the damn thing on. A couple of bolts and screw it on the transom. Should be good to go. Right. We're in the process of building the trim tabs, the aluminum trim tabs, fabricating with the master fabricator, Mr. Stephen Gaines. I think that's going to work just fine. Yeah, man. They're looking good. They're a little bit big, but we're going to test them out first and see what we need and don't need. And blah, 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 yeah, blah. we can blah. always take it off. We can't put it back on. Yeah. They're looking good. <laughs> Yeah, like I was saying, we're going to mount it to where it lines up with the bottom of the boat. So it might end up with a slight overflow here in the beginning of takeoff. But once it starts tabbing out, it ought to do its thing. Just make sure we seal this up good to the transom. and Bada boom, bada bing. Bada bing, baby. And then if you want to adjust them, we'll get that turnbuckle situation and mount it here to here like so and then you just whoosh, 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 well the thing too oh. with adjusting them that's why I went with the the nuts and bolts because like I was saying the old school step and trim yeah it's all it was on both sides nut yeah. and bolt and if you wanted to get more adjustment out of them this way you just take your grinder and cut the lip down right there and right. then you can adjust them further down in the back instead of whatever this is already preset at if this isn't giving you enough lift you just notch this back piece down some and that'll come further down do we do i can't see i don't have a glass did we do a, a no lock we didn't. in the middle we didn't well i haven't done anything to Should it yet we? i don't know let's tighten them down and see what happens All first right. Because we can always take these bolts out and put Tighten them. Tighten that one as tight as you can get it and see if you can pull it apart. <laughs> How much pressure? That's that's what we're going to have to determine. Okay, because the, the ones that are self-leveling, uh -huh. I watched the guy in a video, he just pushes on it. Right. He can push it by hand. You might be able to do that with the shock absorber on these instead of the adjustment one, but... Well, I'm not... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Can you? Can I get a shock absorber? I mean, we would have to kind of like wing That's it. That's what I said. I, I was just going to plan out. on. I would do the turnbuckle thing. Lock. Yeah. Then I can adjust it. But I was hoping that that would be all I would need to adjust it is tightening those nuts and bolts back up. Yep. All right. Let's see. Oh man, you can't move that. Ah, and I'm a pretty and hefty two, fella. Yeah, and two of those. Yeah. It'll lock down no. fine. And then. Like I was saying, if you wanted to get more spread out of it to where the tabs push down right. even more, you just notch this down right here and right. that'll bring that to where it'll fold even more. This is, you could market this. <laughs> that's, that's a brilliant recycling of seat posts yeah. right there. I mean. Yeah, I don't throw nothing away. <laughs> You did good saving these. I'm going to make a hell of a trim I probably tab. have another freaking pair in there somewhere. <laughs> and again, man, if you notch this down right here, you get another half inch or three quarters of an inch. Well, the ones that they sell. Depending on how much room you have on your transom once all this the is. The self-adjusting ones, when you put them on, they do lap down. But then as soon as you start to take off, they right. go up. Right. So we'll see what happens. Plus these, let me see real quick. Let me put this up against the wall here. See how they already yeah. point down? Yeah. So, so I'm in good shape. Yeah, Plus the be... transom leans back like that. Yeah, they might point down too much. We might, like you said, have to bring them up. Yeah, so, you know, have to do notch, notch, notch. Yep. And <laughs> see which one the best, you know. And it's only going to be on these bigger heavy motors. The smaller motors, I don't think it's going to be a problem. No. Then you just loosen the bolts and fold them up out yeah. of the way completely. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go, boys and girls. Uh, rivet these puppies on. 
Finished cleaning up a couple of those spots there. These are in great shape. These were an absolute disaster. Just buffed them out with the wire wheel. Buff this out. And we'll get them on a the boat tomorrow. See what happens. Should be good. I think it's right on the money, right on. So everything's on the bottom, it's flat. Tighten it back up. Maybe. I could take those pieces off, leave the top mounts on that are screwed in, and do anything I, I need to do to them, trim them down, whatever. Yay! Thank you, outboard guys. thing back in. You know, I went like this, turned a little bit, and when I went straight back out, man, it was hard. So that's number three. I always like number two. Come on, man, what's wrong with this damn motor? It's all over the place. Last time. Yo 
Josh and I came out. He took a run. This thing ran great all day. Last two trips out. Are weird. Anyway, it works. Just needs a little tweaking. Shouldn't be difficult to do. Let me put it down on the second pin. What I was going to say, you've heard me say it before, when we were in Tracy's boat, I was testing this motor. I would have it on the second pin. If I didn't, I would porpoise. Then when he got back in the boat, he would have to put it down on the third pin hole. If he didn't, he would porpoise. So it's all about the weight. Anyway, all right, let's try it up on the second pin. That water's definitely got to be slowing this thing down. It's shooting up from those edges on there. Tweaking, take those pieces home, trim them up, trim that big fold off of them, it's too much. Then next time I put them on tomorrow, we'll raise them up just a little bit. Subscribe!